Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Betancourt. I am the Instructional Technology Coordinator for Twin Rivers Unified School District, um, but I am also a recovering teacher. I taught middle and high school science for 16 years. So blending technology and good science education is what I'm passionate about. So I'm super excited to walk you through how to use DFIT for teachers for your science classrooms. I'll show you how to use it for innovating, for differentiating, and even collaborating and assessment. Let's dive in. All right, science teacher peeps, put a finger down if you have ever struggled with student engagement um, because sometimes your content is a little bit difficult. Have you ever felt constrained by lack of resources because it's hard to make cellular respiration engaging? Have you ever faced difficulties in fostering collaboration amongst your diverse learners because you have a lot of different abilities in your classrooms? If you have ever wished to integrate more real world relevant science issues just more effectively? Ever found it challenging to assess and to personalize your student learning and to do that accurately? Yes, all of us. This is where Diffit comes in. So you're gonna go on over to diffit.me and once you sign up, log in, this is what your dashboard or your homepage is gonna kind of look like and you'll see you have a lot of options here. It says get just right resources and it literally means that. You can use a link um, or just type in a, a topic. You can use a, an existing PDF or you know Google Slides that you have or even anything from the web that you want resources for. Diffit has you covered. So let's see what this actually looks like with Diffit. We'll start off with engagement, right? Science is fun. It's amazing. It's the best subject. Don't come at me. But making it engaging is sometimes a little bit difficult because they're not always on the same page with you. So here is a scenario. You have a lesson on cellular respiration. It's got a lot of complex technical details. Even the name doesn't really roll off the tongue. Focuses on things that also don't really roll off the tongue and students have no idea what it means. Glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain. It's got dense textbook materials. Just snooze fest, complex diagrams, scientific terms, and your students are struggling to make relevance of this, right? It's really, really hard to tie some of these, particularly this, into everyday experiences. So because of all that, there is a general lack of enthusiasm and engagement observed in your class. They're not into it. Div it to the rescue. So here's what we can do. First option, I can literally just put the topic, so cellular respiration, into my literally anything tab. I can also, and what I've done here, you'll see, is I've chosen the NGSS standard that that ties to, which it makes it very, very easy. Over here on the right, with you can just align to your standards really quickly. You don't have to, but it makes your resources a little bit better. Then choose your level. So for this, I picked seventh grade, and then you can also choose your language, and this I said English. And that's it. So that's all I put in, topic, standard, grade level, and said go and look at what Diffit gives me. It gives me an adapted reading passage where I can choose to show my sources so I know exactly where this information is coming from to vet it, which I always recommend you vet anything coming from AI. It also gives me a summary. It's just a summary of that information, real quick bullet points. It also gives me key vocabulary words, which it makes it super easy if those aren't the right ones or I need to add more, I can either add vocab words that I know are missing or have AI choose to add them for me. It also gives me multiple choice questions, which I can choose to add the question. It also gives me the ability to add different types of questions. So if I scroll down to different depth of knowledge levels, I can choose comprehension. I can use uh, choose simple reasoning, strategic thinking, or extended thinking. So, so depending on what you want, do you want fact recall or do you want them to dig into your content a little bit more? You have that ability. You can also add questions based on ELA standards or literacy skills. And keep scrolling. It also gives you, yes, this is just from one press of the enter button. It'll give you short answer questions, which you can add, show a key, edit, copy them, or even open-ended prompts um, in addition to that as well, where again, say there's a question that you really love, you ask every year, it gets your students thinking, cool. Click on add prompts and add that question or get rid of the questions that you don't like. It's super easy to edit all of this output. 
but here. Here is where the magic of Diffit really happens is these export options. You have so many export options for different kinds of student activities. There's a bagillion, give or take a real number. Um, you can export these as a forms or docs or slides, which I'll show you in a second. It will give you some suggestions already based on your content, what kind of activities you might want. So over here I have, okay, you might want to do a space cat or a tag for some peer feedback or a social media style summary workbook, which is my personal fave. But if you want to see all of them, click on that see all export options. Click on see all export options. And once you do, you are given a smorgasbord of activity templates. They've broken it up into categories. So scroll down and then scroll across to find a template that is gonna work for your content. They are adding to this all of the time. You can even star your favorite export activity templates to use over and over again. Check back often. They're adding such good stuff all of the time. So for this case study, my somewhat dry cellular respiration uh, topic I chose the social media style summary interactive slide deck and let's take a look at what it looks like. First, you're given a teacher instruction page. So this is a, a Google slide. So I would simply delete this slide, but it's kind of nice. It, it shows you how to use it. Well, let's see what it gives me. It gives me my review vocabulary with my term, my definition and the example sentence. Um, and then look at how cute this is. It gives me a picture and then they have to make their own username and then create three relevant hashtags for that post. A lot more interactive than maybe I, what is something I would have done before or like a workbook page but it also gives me it gives them a spot to um, have them read and take notes so they will read the content they will annotate it also puts those multiple choice questions in there which take a look it does ask the multiple choice question but it also has them explain which answer did you pick and why that's so good have them explaining their understanding is crucial for science instruction it will also give the put the short answer questions in there where they write their own response and then look what it does. It gives them the open-ended questions. So it gives them a chance to respond. What do you think about this? What do you know about this? But then look what it also does. What did your partner or group say? Getting them talking to their peers about this science content. Perfect beautiful. Couldn't ask for anything more except for maybe the end turn and talk where they turn to their partner and share the most interesting thing that they've learned. So they're really doing something with this content a lot better than listening to me stand up at the board and talk about the credit cycle. Now I love that social media style template. I think it's fun. Um, but here are some other options that you could do. So I took an image analysis. So a notice and a wonder you could use this as an intro. Um, and then it also breaks down the reading. What did you notice about this reading? What did you wonder? about this. The vocabulary choice board template is fabulous. It gives them a lot of choice in how they are going to not only learn the vocabulary word, but then demonstrate understanding of that vocab word to you. It also gives, here's a vocabulary practice with um, one of my favorites, a Freyer. So if you're really into the Hedge of Protocols, there's a ton of Hedge of Protocol templates in Diffit. Freyer is just one of them. And then all my favorite is mapping. So there's a lot of different graphic organizer types in here. Bubble Map graphic organizer is one a great thing to use for again vocab and for some topics that are a little bit more connected any of these templates are great options for you to choose for any of your science topics so let's talk for a moment about differentiation how many of you have students in your class with varying levels of ability like every teacher in every classroom all your students are at different spots so how do we make your science content accessible for everyone. Diffit also makes that easy. Let's say you found a 12th grade reading level article, but again, you teach seventh grade, so that is not going to work. What do you do? You are going to pop that URL of that article just directly into the an article or video URL, choose your grade level. So I'm going from 12th, running it down to seventh grade, and then pick your language, which Diffit has over 50 different languages that you can then even translate this article into and the appropriate grade level. Let me give you another example. You have a trusty worksheet. You love this worksheet. It's got the content you like. It's got pictures you like. It's got questions you like. It's great. However, it's not great for your EL learners, and it's not great for maybe your readers who are not reading at grade level. So what do you do? You upload that PDF to Diffit, choose the correct reading level and pick your language. And it will, voila, in just a matter of seconds, translate that worksheet into the language of your choice and the grade level of your choice. You have just instantly given access 
to your EL learners. You are making your content accessible for all of your learners with a click of a button. Give you another example, YouTube videos. I'll use Crash Course as an example. I love Crash Course, Hank Green, chef's kiss. However, sometimes he uses vocabulary that maybe middle, my middle school students wouldn't understand, but I like the visuals in the video. I like the way he says it, he's funny. I wanna use it, but the resources that I might use with it are not gonna work. So I can pop that YouTube URL directly into to diff it, level down, so choose my reading level, and then voila, I have made a Google form, which is real quick, check for understandings at the appropriate grade level, maybe even in the appropriate language. Super easy to make, again, all of your science content accessible for all of your students. Collaboration. Collaboration is key in science. Science does not work in a silo. You got to talk to each other. The best way to learn science is by talking to each other, but sometimes that is difficult to do. But Diffit has made a ton of templates for you to make collaboration just a breeze. Just take a look at some of their collaborative partner work templates. So they have a partner share where what do you notice? What do you wonder? So partner A wondered this, partner B wondered this, but we both wondered this. Or those open-ended questions. Again, you think this, well, what does your partner have to say about it? Check out this beaut of a think pair share. So your general essential question, it'll put it in there. And then I think this, my partner thinks this, and then we're going to share out to the class this. So getting them talking about your science content. Speaking of talking, take a look at their reflect and discuss template. It'll give them their essential question where they have to then write their response. And then they'll talk to their table group. They'll talk to four other people or three other people that are answering the same question, but what did they have in common? What did they write? They have to hear what the other person says and then take that in and then write it down, really getting them to talk about different scientific opinions. And then this nice little Venn diagram where things that you shared, things that they shared with similarities, and then talking about what did you guys think that was? What, how were the views similar? How were they different? Whose response did you find the most interesting? Why? Getting them reflecting on your content and then really talking to each other about it is just beautiful. Assessment in science is difficult. It's hard to do. Good assessment is hard to do. Luckily, Diffit makes it a little bit easier. Some ideas for you is to use Diffit for lab analysis. Their notice and wonder templates are great for inquiry labs or any kind of labs that you're doing, quite honestly. What did you notice? What do you wonder to start off with? And then just have them do a CER with it. There's a beautiful uh, claims evidence reasoning template in Diffit where it'll give you your essential question. They give you the claim, they give you the evidence, and they can give you the reason. So templates in order for them to communicate the results of their lab and for you to be able to decipher whether or not they understood what was going on. Or you could do different types of analysis with your labs. Here's a beautiful race template. So restating the question, answering the question, citing evidence and explain. Perfect for science explanations. Or if you want to do like a check for understanding after a lab, have Divit create a nice little check for understanding Google form so they can answer real quickly. Yeah, they completed the lab, but did they actually understand what was going on? Use Divit for that too. A couple of other assessment templates that I would definitely keep in your science teacher tool Toolkit. Huge fan of hexagonal thinking where lots of these vocab terms are connected somehow and you can really really get whether or not a student understands something by the way that they put things together and their explanations for those connections. Do that with it, that hexagonal thinking template or even just quick formative assessment. Exit tickets, just a ticket out the door type of thing. The 321 is fabulous. It has them list three things they learned that day, two pictures or drawings or images to represent and then one lingering question they still have. You'll get a really good idea of whether or not students left with what you wanted them to leave with. And trust me when I say this, I just kind of hit the tip of the iceberg on all of the different ways that you can use Diffit to create engaging, interactive, collaborative content in your science classrooms. So go into diffit.me, explore all of their templates. There's so many, they're adding to them daily, but it does take the legwork off of you to create those instructional materials that really, really work well for teaching the best subject, which is science in, in all of your classes. That's it, take care.